Hello, everybody in YouTube land, and welcome to the TLU Orchestra Concert. I'm Eliza Jeffords, and I'm the orchestra director here at TLU. And behalf on everyone, on behalf of everyone on stage, we want to welcome you and thank you for tuning in. As you'll see from our concert, it has been a very different year for us, but we are really overjoyed to have been able to get together in person to make music this year, and we really hope that you will enjoy our offerings. We have a senior violist here to introduce our first piece, Elise Gray. The composer of Possibilities, Brian Baumages, chose a passage of Atlas Shrugged, written by Anne Rand, as the inspiration for this piece. After a year of loss and struggle, it provides a reminder to all of us as orchestra members and students, and hopefully to you audience members, to continue to strive and to continue to hope in the face of adversity, and to look towards the brighter days that are coming for all of us. Do not let your fire go out, spark by irreplaceable spark. In the hopeless swamps of the not quite, the not yet, and the not at all, do not let the hero in your soul perish and leave only the frustration for your life you deserved but never have been able to reach. The world you desire can be one. It exists, it is real, it is possible, and it is yours.
Hi, my name is Celia Garcia. I'm a senior double majoring in, in accounting and business management and minoring in information systems. I play the violin. The next piece, Polaris, was written by Garrett Hope for the TOU Orchestra in 2017. Hope consulted with students about the music they most enjoyed playing and arrived at a piece with a sweeping cinematic theme, but with a rhythmic energy and intensity of a contemporary film and game score. The composer also writes that Polaris is dedicated to his grandfather, who led a life of adventure and modeled following your passions, acting in integrity, celebrating family, and enjoying life. Polaris represents a wild and ever-seeking nature, while also providing a sign to always find your way home.
Hi, my name is Brenda Carlson. I'm a freshman majoring in violin performance, and I'm from Universal City, Texas. Arithmetric number one is written for any combination of instruments, and ideal for a year where ensembles split up and sudden quarantines have become a part of our reality. It is inspired by minimalist composer Terry Riley and consists of short musical fragments that may be played with repeats and jumps between at the prerogative of each player. Thus, no two performances of the piece will be the same. The result is consonant harmonies and moments of repetition that create a trance or electronic dance music effect reminiscent of the minimalist soundscapes created by Terry Riley, Steve Reich, and Philip Glass.
In a period of online-only classes at the beginning of the spring semester, the orchestra embarked on a new way to make music together through improvisation, collaboration in groups, and working with digital audio workstations. This piece, titled Confusion, Chaos, and Resolution, was composed by senior Marley Dugan, first by collecting improvisations no longer than 15 seconds long by members of her assigned group. Though the group did collaborate on a key and overall mood for their improvisations, each member was allowed to use their own inspiration for the 15-second clip. It was then up to each student to take the clips and put them together through the digital audio workstation and work them into a two-minute piece. Students were able to use effects such as added reverb, fades, and other electronic manipulations of the sound. It was a special treat to meet over Zoom and play some of the selected compositions for composer Brian Balmages for his feedback on the compositional makeup and further edits to be made to several of the compositions. Marley's piece is just one example and one of our favorites of this creative student work that kept us collaborating and playing our instruments together in spite of the physical distance between us. year, music education majors take two semesters of conducting, culminating in a performance with either the band or the orchestra. This is important training towards their eventual career as band and orchestra directors. This year we have three wonderful student conductors as the opportunity was cut off for some of them last spring with the move to online classes. Please meet each of the conductors as they introduce their piece. Hello, my name is Jaylian Cummings, and I am the student conductor for Sequoia by Brian Holmes. I'm from Universal City, Texas, and I am majoring in viola performance and music education here at TLU. Brian Holmes is a contemporary composer who usually composes for solo voice or chorus. Holmes wrote Sequoia to capture the grandeur and imagery of the Sequoia National Park in the Sierra Nevada Mountains of California. The theme is very similar to a hymn and is very powerful yet simple, fluctuating from section to section. This piece is rich and expressive and I hope that you will enjoy it as much as I do.
Hi, I'm Marley Dugan. I'm a senior music education major here at TLU. Hunter's Moon by Doug Spata is a dramatic cinematic piece for string orchestra. It tells the tale of a hunter who has to work under the cover of darkness, similar to the story of Robin Hood. The hunter's theme begins in the cello and travels throughout the orchestra. Enjoy!
Hello, my name is Anderson Roy, and I'm a double bassist here at Texas Lutheran University. This is my senior year. The piece that we'll be playing for you today is Secret World by Michael Hopkins. It's a beautifully mysterious piece in E minor. It uses a lot of chromaticism and non-traditional chords uh, to transition from section to section. When listening to this piece, um, emotions of pondering and meditation are evoked, and it really calls for an introspection to look inside of yourself and wonder exactly what it is that you would like to express to the world, something that is wholly personal and wholly mysterious, unique to the rest of the world. So I hope that you enjoy listening to this piece. I sure enjoy conducting it. And I love that these musicians have gotten together and worked with me.
Hi, my name is Hannah. I'm a senior majoring in theology from Omaha, Nebraska, and I play the violin. Camille Sasson, a French Romantic era composer, wrote Quintet in A minor, Opus 14, in 1855, and dedicated it to his great aunt, Charlotte Gayard Massaw. The second movement presents a sentimental theme in the piano before passing it to the strings. The piano and strings continue in conversation as a second lyrical melody is initially presented by the viola and then the quartet before returning to the opening theme and a quietly gentle close to the movement.
We are graduating several seniors this year who, as I always say, I wish I could keep an orchestra forever. But I love seeing them poised to go out into the world and accomplish so much. I will be presenting each of them with a plaque that bears a quote by Robert Schumann saying, to send light into the darkness of men's hearts, such is the duty of the artist. Sending light into all of our hearts becomes more and more necessary, this year especially, and it is something I know each of our graduates will do as they go out into the world carrying music in their hearts. Please enjoy seeing each of them in the following slides before our final piece. Hi everybody and welcome back to the live portion of our concert. I just wanted to take a minute and have our seniors wave so that you can give them some online cheers. Wave seniors, say hi. <laughs> We're really going to miss all of them. And I wanted to give a shout out to one of our seniors. Uh, every year we have a concerto competition for all of the students in the School of Music. And uh, the spring of 2020 was no exception. And we had a wonderful winner, Hannah Grove, won uh, the concerto competition on the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. But as you know, unfortunately, we all had to go home in the middle of the semester and her final performance was not possible. And this year, unfortunately, it was still not possible to safely put together our full orchestra. So we are ready. Uh, we would love to have Hannah back. Hopefully, this is not the last that you have seen of her. And um, I just want to recognize her for winning the concerto competition so beautifully. Um, we also have a few thanks to shout out to everybody. And the first one is to the TLU School of Music. So many schools of music across the country have had to scramble to put together live music, and many of them haven't been able to this year. So we're all just so thankful to the work that especially Dr. Doug Boyer has done and the other music faculty so that we could be together and play music together this year. Um, we also want to give a shout out to the Jackson crew and Jonathan Zittleman for all of their help in producing so many concerts for us and pivoting to do, doing all of this live stream and, and recording. It's a lot of work for them. So thank you to the Jackson crew. And then there's one aspect that's kind of invisible about this whole, uh, this whole online thing. And that is getting the correct licensing for performing the music that we, uh, that we are doing. So um, all the directors have had to write to publishers this year and get permission to put up our videos of our music. And sometimes that involves a small fee and sometimes the fee is a little bit bigger. So I really want to shout out to a couple of groups who have made the last piece possible. The Capriol Suite was one that I really wanted for us to do because it really it's so fun to play. And it gives us a lot of opportunity to work together as a chamber group and listen to each other. Um, but the, the fee for the sync license was a little pricey. And several student groups got together to help me out with that, which was so meaningful. So I want to give a shout out to the betas and the thetas and music and memory and also Elevate Systems. We're really thankful to them to help us make the Capriol Suite possible. So. Without further ado, we're going to play the Capriol Suite. It was written in 1926 by Peter Warlock, and all of the movements are dance movements, so you'll hear that aspect in each one. The first movement is a lively, quick dance where the dancers slide their foot across the floor. The second movement is slower and more stately, and from what I've read, it's for older people. <laughs> Uh, the third movement is lively and sprightly, and it ends quietly, though, at the end with a pizzicato-only section. And then the last movement that we're going to play is actually a sword dance. So it's supposed to be a dance between four swordsmen who clash against each other. You'll hear the dissonance, and it makes for a very uh, enlivening and lively ending to our concert. Thank you so much for tuning in, and without further ado, the Capriol Suite. Thank <laughs> you. 